And now we're on to fifth, the fifth question. How do you, as mayor, expect to pay for the city's role in the arts, given all the other pressures on the budget? Councilman McCartman. I'm Councilman Oliveria. I know. I know it's the O's. I think you could say it about anything, right? I mean, look, look at our libraries that are open three and a half days a week. If you'd like them open up seven days. You know, there's, there's all these uh, challenges that comes to the budget. And I think what we, what we have under the mayor, which we didn't have before, was we had more of a community budget process where we actually had a survey call residents at home because not everyone shows up to a meeting and ask them where they thought the budget priority should be. Second, we have the meeting where we invite neighborhood associations and community activists together to come to hear about what are the trade-offs. And finally, we do a budget meeting in every district where we get more input. I think, again, this is a challenge for the arts community because we as elected officials will be challenged. We all want to be liked. We're all elected officials. We don't want to go in a room where everyone gives us a sour face. So at the end of the day, you have to do your best at lobbying the people, uh, the representatives, but you have to get your people that are your patrons, the people that enjoy what you do, and get them to also have a communication with us. Because if we're only hearing about one subject, that's going to make it much more difficult. I think we have to realize that in the total capacity of the budget, sm a small amount of money can make a major difference to the arts program. And so I think we have to keep that in mind because if everything gets swallowed into uh, uh, you know, one, uh, one major thing, uh, then that's a problem. I myself have been an advocate of a minimum spending in the police department budget. I think that still needs to be done. I think there are much more operational efficiencies you can find in this city to provide uh, the cost savings to fund the arts. Let me just give you one small example. The road dollars to 4300 There's more of that to do, and those cost savings can help fund art. Thank you. Well, we've been talking about this a little bit with almost every question. It seems like, and I want to reiterate, uh, I believe that extraordinary times are ahead of us economically. Uh, you don't budget that way when you draft your initial budget. You have to be somewhat conservative. But the fact of the matter is property taxes are increasing. Uh, sales are increasing. And we have a high sales tax rate here. So. We are going to have our fair share of sales taxes coming in. I'm standing for mayor because I stand for a city that works for everybody and works for everybody within the city. It's got to be workable for everybody, and that includes the arts community. So, yes, absolutely, the first thing that needs to come back in this community is public safety. I've been campaigning on that this entire campaign. And, and we have to watch the fiscal bottom line. And we have to continue doing that. Uh, the current mayor identified that problem very, very accurately. Uh, I don't agree with his approach, but he identified the problem of, of fiscal restraint uh, very, very accurately. But we also have to do is we have to make, make sure that we have a dedicated workforce, whether it's cops, whether it's OCA, whether it's firefighters, that feel rewarded, feel wanted, feel supported, and we have to find the money to support those folks. We also have to make sure that we meet what I call the third bottom line, and that's our customer. That's all of you and all the rest of the folks in this community, including young people, uh, that deserve a full program and availability of arts in this community. Uh, so what I stand for is balance. Uh, we'll balance the budget. I've done that for 21 years. We don't run deficits in local government. We take what we have, and part of our job is to distribute it as, as appropriately and proportionately as possible, uh, given all the priorities. Uh, you have my commitment that the arts community will get its fair share. Thank you. You're going to channel Connie Martinez a little bit on this. I think if our cultural landscape really depends on public dollars, you know, we're in big problems. We're in big trouble. Uh, what we really need to do is grow an audience, because that's going to sustain our cultural landscape far more than what comes from City Hall. And I've worked very hard to bring people into downtown because I know that is often an urban audience that is quite often the primary patrons, the primary audience for many of the arts. Uh, and that's why I push so hard on high-rise incentive, essentially cutting fees on high-rise construction. 
so we can get some housing downtown. Now we have two cranes in the air. By this time next year, we're going to have 2,500 units of housing under construction in the downtown. And we're going to see a lot more feet on the sidewalk, and hopefully that means more patrons at the rep, and hopefully more board members at the rep. Uh, so clearly, we need to grow an urban audience that appreciates and cultivates the arts. But secondly, we know that the primary source of revenue for the arts in this city is TOT, it's transit occupancy tax revenue, it comes from hotels. And so I've been pushed to do everything we can to get hotels out of the ground because we know it's the money we need. So uh, the good news is we've got a, a hotel that's about to break ground downtown in a few weeks as a result of this incentive that I pushed hard for. Uh, and we are now seeing significant revenue growth in TOT. You saw 30% growth just last year uh, because obviously we're in good times. Uh, we need to do everything we can to ensure that growth continues. And I know uh, Council Member, or Vice Mayor Nguyen made reference to a uh, proposal in the uh, Mayor's budget message. I worked very hard with many arts leaders, many of you who are here, to put that in place with the Mayor to ensure that we would have any net new increment of growth of TOT that would go to help support uh, these uh, city facilities. Because I know a lot of organizations are paying off a lot out of the pocket for air conditioning. One of the big reasons I'm running for mayor is to help increase our economic output, to increase jobs. And if we want folks to be able to afford to go to cultural events, cultural events across the city, not everybody can afford to go. They need to have jobs that pay a little more than minimum wage. <clears throat> I support increasing middle class jobs. And how would I do that? I want to make it easier for people to start and grow businesses in this city. We need to do a lot of work in the planning and building a code department to make electronic plan submission and review a reality, to actually look at other cities, and I, I have looked at cities across this country, including Phoenix and other cities, who do plans in 24 hours. We need to get businesses up and running. We need to be a city where people want to start businesses. And when we can do that, then we will increase our job output so that people can have a higher paying job. It's not good enough for people to have two uh, minimum wage jobs. We've got to have jobs in the city. I will be working very hard to do that. And when we can do that, we're going to see a lot more participation in the arts. The other thing I would say is we have to bring arts to uh, the multicultural communities across the city and make it accessible to young people. I go into too many, I go to the stage country, we're seasoned subscribers there. I don't see enough representation from all age groups or all cultures. We've got to reach out and really address this so that we can have a much more expanded audience. Thank you. Certainly, there's going to be uh, competing issues, uh, competing wants, competing needs uh, in the next year and for the next eight years or so. And it seems to me that to be really uh, realistic, arts is always at the bottom of the totem pole. And so one of the things, and I've been thinking about this quite a bit since uh, we passed the budget to approve the $400,000 for the four uh, arts and cultural facilities here in, in downtown. What, what else can we do um, to contribute a small portion of our funding uh, to these arts and cultural facilities? And two, two things that I want to talk about tonight. One is we want to make sure, at least ensure that these cultural and arts facilities stay intact. If we don't have the money to expand programs and services and get more people to come to downtown to visit these arts and cultural facilities, then we have to be sure that their building is operating and that certain components of that building stay intact. And those are the kind of funding we can actually provide uh, to make sure that they stay in one place. And that's what we did. When I talked with Susan Craig and Tim Bridgie over the Tech Museum, they told me that it's going to cost at least $20 million dollars to be able to fully fund these arts and cultural facilities. Obviously, we don't have that kind of money, so we gave them $400,000, which is very, very minimal, but it helps. And so that's why we got to look beyond the horizon, think about the small increments that you can give them so that they can continue to operate, and that the buildings, the plumbing, and everything continue to work. That's what I wanted to do. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is, how about the city come up with a plan to provide a matching fund? Get these arts and cultural facility, facilities to work. We say, we'll give you $2 million. You need to come up with a matching fund. You need to go out there, get the right CEOs, get the right corporations to contribute to your 
cultural facilities, and we match that. That's a good way to start. Thank you.